Hey, I just got a new studio light here from iFootage, it's the SL160D, and as you can see, it's super compact with its stand, super portable, that makes it great for video creators. So in this video, we'll have a look at it and what you can do with it. And they also released another light, the big one here, the 320D. It's also interesting to know why you would get a big light like that if you can have a small and compact one. So we'll also have a look at that one. Let's go. And little disclaimer here, this video is not sponsored by iFootage. I did not get any money for it, but they sent me all these lights and soft boxes for free just to let you know. But it's a completely independent review. I don't hold anything back and they will also not see this video before it gets live. I would say let's start by quickly going through the numbers that actually don't tell me much. I'm not a professional when it comes to lights. I'm more like the practical user. So they claim that it has an SSI of 84 and CIE of D55. The 60D has a CR of 98 and the TLCI of 99 and the temperature is 5600 plus minus 200 which we will come to it later like my findings were a little bit different and it has a better R12 index or what also means white color range show a PDF here I don't really know what that means but it supposed to be good I guess and it has a 0 to 100 percent stepless adjustments that, that that's definitely welcome it is flicker 3 I mean every professional light should be that but it's good that they mentioned that here so we can be sure and so far I did not get any flicker with these lights in my test then it also has app control which I really enjoy especially because you can also put both lights or multiple lights together depending on how many you have and control them all at once from one app and also so you can turn all of them on and off at the same time and adjust all brightness levels at the same time and so on. Like it's really nice. Both lights also have special effects. There is the paparazzi effect, lighting, firework or lightning, fireworks, pulsing, strobe light, broken light bulb, explosion and welding. So lots of effects here if you want to emulate something in some shots. And then the 60D also has USB-C charging, what I really love, especially if you're on the go somewhere, you don't want to bring another charger. So you can use your MacBook charger, for example. And if you want to, you can also power it with a V-mount battery. It's especially interesting for the filmmakers. They have an extra accessory for that. So that's not included with the light. You have to buy that extra, but I think it's worth it for certain people and it's actually great if you're on the go because the light also only weights 0.76 kilograms so super lightweight and together with a v-mount battery that's a really mobile or portable setup and regarding the mounts the 60d has a mini bones mode i think it's proprietary from iFootage but i'm not exactly sure but they told me that they will sell soft boxes that are special for this mount they don't have that right now so i'm using a bones mount adapter but if you buy it later in the shop you will find soft boxes for that then and I think that's good because that mount is a bit smaller so that makes it even more compact but the 300D light that comes with a normal Bowens mount so you can use your regular soft boxes with it and special of these lights is also that they use a low blue light spectrum so if you shoot in the dark especially for a long period of time then that puts less strain on your eyes and I especially like this feature because I also use my studio light when I color grade just at one to two percent so that when I sit on my computer, my eyes have a like kind of natural light source and having a bit less blue light there is of course better because I usually color grade my videos in the dark in the night and then I can sleep a bit better when I don't get that much blue light. So it's a good functionality for some people and they at least say that it does not change the light or anything. It should still be natural, but we'll come to that in a few minutes. So that's all the dry specs of both lights, but I also want to make this video a bit more practical by showing you how you can use them. So let's do that. That's my first example here, or actually the second, like the first one was sitting on my sofa. And now I have the sofa in the background and I'm sitting in the corner of my room. And it was super quick and easy to set that up. It took me maybe five minutes around something. I didn't measure it, but it was really just like dragging the light here quickly, put the chair here, camera as well. I mean, I had it kind of set up before. I just had to adjust the height a little bit and put my reflector here on the table, done. And the reason why I think that this is important, especially for content creators, 
creators is that your videos become more interesting the more often you change the camera angle. So if you can change the angle for every single part of your video, that definitely helps to keep the viewer engaged. And now there's always the problem if you need like 20 or 30 minutes or so to set everything up that costs you a lot of time. It's also not that fun anymore. So being able to do these things quickly really helps a lot. As you can see the stand from the slide, the 60D is a bit special. Like you don't have the usual tripod at the bottom. You just have this plate here. So it might worry you a little bit if it falls over. And as you can see, it actually holds up pretty well. What I do here is a power brick. I put it to the back of the light so that it acts a bit like a counterweight. As you can see, it's perfectly fine. Of course, if you run against it or so, then it will fall over. So be careful but you don't have to worry as long as you use a smaller soft box. It's the 50 centimeter right now, you will be fine. It's one issue though, you can't put it on a carpet. If you do that, then it will fall over. So <laughs> better just put it on a flat floor and you will be fine. It's also why I have to drag my carpet around now for the next setup. Ah, <laughs> this is when you use step up rings that don't really work anymore and your ND filter falls on your foot. At least the filter didn't break. <laughs> and that's my third example for the small 60D light. As you can see, I'm standing now. So let's say I would want to make a studio tour or something like that, or explain something here on my desk where I want to stand, then that's great as well because it's easy and fast to set up. And when it comes to the size or the height of the tripod, it's around 150 centimeters, but plus the mount, it's around 160. The light itself also is a bit higher, so it's probably like to two meters or something like that, like the top edge of the light now. So if you're like a super tall person over two meters, it might be a bit problematic, but if you're below that, you will be fine with this light. And what you also see now, I have the window open here to make the background a little bit more interesting. And this light is not powerful enough to really compensate for the sunlight coming from the outside so that you can look out of the window. I mean, you see a little bit of detail there, but not that much. And this is actually the reason why I would use the 320D light for situations like that, where I have to compensate for window light. Because if I put that to 100%, this is no problem to compensate for the sun. And we will see in a second how that works. iFootage also provides these soft boxes here in case you need them. To be honest, I personally always use these soft boxes here with a grid inside because that makes the light direct but also soft, so I have full control over my light. I think people use these soft boxes here. I never used them, but I would use them if I want to have a bit more spill light in my room or maybe light the background or so. But I would say, let's give it a try. I mean, I never used them, so why not? So that's a small one here. As you can see, it's a perfect fit actually for that tripod. Like. It's actually even better than the one that we used before. So just a quick setup here, not tripod or anything, but I would say it gives a bit more of a feeling of an actual lamp that you would use around your sofa, for example, instead of the usual studio lamp that you use. So that's the bigger soft box now. Uh, how does that look? I don't know. I expect it to be a bit softer now. You decide, how do you like that? And by the way, the standard soft boxes that I use all the time, the 50 centimeter here and the 90 centimeter, both come with the grid included and also two diffusers so you can see here directly behind the grid there's one diffuser and there's also one smaller diffuser inside the softbox now so you get really really soft light and i would also say that they generally feel like really good quality they also have some velcro here on the sides which is great if you want to attach something to it no complaints here really if you want to get soft boxes with it just get the eye footage directly they're good and these lights come with these two bags which feel super quality must say though the 60d bag this is really super lightweight. This is how I want it to be. But the 320D light, it has some sort of hard plate at the top, what makes it a bit heavier. And considering that the light itself is already 3.5 kilograms around, plus the charger 1.2 kilo, it actually gets quite heavy. So yeah, 60D, great for traveling, also a bit farther, but 320D, more locally yeah and one more point that i want to talk about here is the accuracy of those lights i footage says that are 5600 kelvin plus minus 200 which is actually pretty good but my findings are a bit different here like just keep it with a grain of salt because it's early versions of those lights the 60d when i tested it on the a7 IV and sony a7s3 using a gray card there i got 5800 and 5900 kelvin like 
depends, like sometimes 5,800, five, sometimes 5,900. And on the 320D, it was 6,000 and 6,100 Kelvin. So not super accurate here in that case, but I must also say that I talked with iFootage about it and they were quite surprised. So it seems like it's not supposed to be like that. So I expect that the final production units that you will receive have more accuracy. So I would suggest you to watch some reviews, maybe one or two or more months after the lights come out. So you see if other people have the same value use or not and then you know more about that. I must personally say that for me it's not actually an issue like I set my A7 IV here on my desk setup in the previous videos always to white balance 6000 because of that and on the vector scope in DaVinci Resolve my skin tones looked accurate and I also achieved a nice teal on my walls here so the look that I always want to go for here in that room so for me it's not a problem and I think for most creators it will also be fine here but yeah take it with a grain of salt watch some other reviews after these lights come out. So that's my first usage example here for the 320D at least as a key light I also use the 60D now in the background here with one of the special soft boxes which actually looks quite cool now I like it I use a smaller one. This is the setup that I will use it 99% of the time in and I use the 320D here because I want to have a big light source. I mean I'm sitting here at my desk every day and I don't want the light to be that close to my face so I need a bigger soft box to be able to put it farther away. I think that he works quite good. It's behind my desk and just stands there all the time and I can just turn it on whenever I want to, especially with the app that makes it super handy. I also have a fixed tripod here right in front of me so that I only have to place my camera on it and I can just use my microphone here instantly. It's also permanently here. I never move it so it makes it super easy for me to record my main angle for my YouTube studios quickly and then if I want to record some other angles I I can use a 60D light to quickly do that. But I would say let's now also give you two more examples on how you can use the 320D light creatively to create effects that you can't do with the 60D light. Because this main setup here you could also achieve that with the 60D light you would just need to attach a bigger softbox, 90 centimeters in that case, and for that you also need a heavier tripod because otherwise it would fall over. So yeah, let's now come to the examples on where you actually need the 3 320D. So that's the first example here and as you can see I have the window behind me open what makes it super tricky to film because when I now turn the 320D off you see I'm completely dark and at least when I have the lock curve actually there's even still a bit, de bit of detail in the sky it's not blown out yet maybe in the color grade later I have to blow it out a little bit we'll see about that but now there is still detail in the sky but you see I'm completely dark you can't see my face anymore and now when I turn on the 320D at 100% see it's a lot better my face is still underexposed so it would be even better to use a 400, 500, even 600D light for a situation like that because it's so bright outside. I could also do, I have the 60D here when I turn that on. See, it looks even better because my shadow is not that dark anymore on my face. As a comparison here, let's turn the 320D off. So this is only the 60D right now. Now when I turn that off and the 320D on, you see the difference. So you see the 320D is actually a lot brighter as the 60D. Still, it could be a tiny bit brighter, I would say, for a setup like that, but you also see it helps a lot. This is why you want to have a more expensive and much brighter light like the 320D, just for situations like that where you have to compensate for a bright background. And also important here, talking about the fans of the light, they have fans, and right now this is the loudest as it can get. We have the 320D at 100%. And I can hear the fan also while it's sitting here, but it's really quiet. Like what you hear is likely the air conditioning. I have that on here and the air conditioning definitely overshadows the 320D fan. So I think especially when you use microphones like here, I'm using the DJI mic right now, or you use a boom mic close to your mouth, then I don't expect that you will still hear the fans of the light, especially also the 60D that's even quieter. And that's my second example here. So now I actually place the light on my balcony 
the outside because I actually had the situation before that we wanted to have a bit of window light coming from outside but it was just not strong enough because it was a quite small window and the light outside were pretty much not existing because it was cloudy and now here I placed the light outside as you can see it actually looks really natural because of the big light source and let me quickly show the app as well I actually really like it so as you can see here on the screen you can organize it in projects so you can press the plus icon then you can give your project a name so let's say my room but I will actually not use it now just go to my project one here and there I have both lights the number three here is the 320d and you can also see the 60d here and of course you have all these standard functionalities here like I could now adjust the 60d light here to get a bit more fill. Of course, it's too bright now, that's 100. And then what you can also do is you can click on a light. So I just click on 60DN now here. And then you can see you get an option screen here where you can adjust the dimming curve. This is linear, exponential, logarithmic, and S curve. So this is like when you uh, set the slider, then it like changes the curve a little bit. I don't really know if you would actually need that, but maybe to get certain effects. And talking about effects, you also have the effect panel here. So let's say I want to have a firework on my 60D, then I could emulate a firework here. I think that's cool to have these effects. And it also has music here, which I found pretty cool. So let's play a song here from Epidemic Sound to see how it works with music. <laughs> I mean, not that it does anything. <laughs> I don't think you need it with a light like that, but maybe if you want to emulate party light or so, then you can do that as well. And what also comes with the app here, you see next to project one on the screen, there's another switch. And when I press that, then I can turn all lights within the project off at the same time. And you can also use the all devices INT slider to set all lights to the same level at the same time. So let's do that. Now I've set it both to 40, it's overexposed. Let's set them both to 25. So if you sometimes want to have all your lights at the same percentage, you can do that as well. I personally don't think it makes much sense because the 320D light, in my case at least, is brighter at 24% or 25% as the 60D light obviously, but especially if you use lights that are all the same, like let's say you use two or more 60D lights, then it can make sense because then you get the exact same percentage everywhere. Aside from that, I really don't have anything to complain about these lights. The only thing really is the accuracy. What I already mentioned that could be a bit better, at least with the lights that I have. I hope that the final production lights will not be the same, like mentioned before. And aside from that, if you want to know another tool that I use a lot here in my studio to make my shots more interesting, check out this video here in the corner about the Zipon Micro 2 Plus with the Pons PT system. So that's an awesome tool as well. And aside from that, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. See ya.